All right, what are we doing? Hello, we are getting ready for the first farmer's market of the season. We got all this bok choy from our local CSA, Gypsy Ran Organics. And we're gonna be making bok choy kimchi today. And we even have a pineapple kraut that is currently fermenting. So we're gonna be making both of those at the farmer's market and hopefully some sourdough bread as well. So we have 10 pounds of bok choy. I mean, look at these leaves compared to mine. Mine, they, <laughs> these are actual bok choy leaves. I'm mean, look at. I mean, I could find. This is. I, I I just washed all of it. Why does mine not look like that? Mine look like sticks with someone that glued leaves to it. I wish I could grow mine like that. So yeah, uh, back in 2020, we did. We were doing farmer's market and we were selling ferments. Uh, our main seller was kimchi and surprisingly that <laughs> sold pretty well. So we did that uh, for the whole year and then Angela got pregnant with, uh, with Hannah. And that kind of came to a stop because pregnancy and making kimchi does not mix because the smells are phenomenal. So we. We stopped that and it's been a couple of years since we did farmer's market so we're going back to it this year. And we're going to start with bok choy kimchi this year. We normally make it out of Napa so uh, I'll show you the other things we're making. Check it out strange thing. Uh, so we, this is sauerkraut but uh, pineapple sauerkraut. Pineapple, ginger, turmeric. Yeah pineapple, ginger, turmeric sauerkraut. Don't ask me how that works but I'm looking forward to uh, tasting it. Yeah, so we do we do ferments. That's basically our main thing. Angela is getting all the ingredients ready. Uh, I don't do a lot of indoor shooting, so if the light's weird, I'm sorry. This is this is just the pre-settings of the camera. Uh, so this is green onion. It's bachu. It's Korean green onion. Yeah, yeah it's bachu. That's exactly yeah. <laughs> Chopped it up, and this is daikon. Uh, yeah, that's the, just the tops of the daikon. That will all go to the pigs and chickens, so nothing goes to waste. Yeah, I was thinking it's kind of cool how we're trying to we're trying to support local businesses while providing food security and food independence for our family, and then extend that to as many people in the community as want that. Um, and I was thinking as I was chopping up these vegetables, I love that. Like this bok choy, for example, Gypsy Rain Organics, who I'd already spoken to about using the vegetables, reached out to me because it bolted sooner than it was supposed to. So it was either going to go to their pigs, or he's like, hey, if you want it at a discount, you can come get it. So I love that this is still a food that we can use. We can make it into kimchi. It's going to taste awesome. Um, but even if we hadn't, for both Gypsy Rain Organics and ourselves, there is no food waste because all the rest of the pieces are going to go to the animals who are going to fertilize the soil who are then going to feed us later in life so it's a beautiful it's a beautiful system when you start working locally and with nature all right so if you want to notice other things in the background angela also makes sourdough bread so this is our actual baking station that's a this Mi isn't just for our family i run a yeah. micro bakery <laughs> that's a micro bakery basically yeah so yeah we don't really no one needs a mixer that big, except unless <laughs> you're make, making ba a lot of bread. And check out that monster. Don't mind all the mess. But yeah, look at this refrigerator we had to invest in for her bread. And Sta ferments. And ferments. This thing's taller than I am. It's gotta be at least 6'5", because <laughs> I'm 6 feet. I'm, I'm a little over 6 feet, and this is, yeah, this is... <laughs> Yeah, that's a serious refrigerator. Not a freezer or anything, it's just refrigerator. And this will house all our bread and ferments. On top of that, we have this tiny little thing that we outgrew in like in, in a week. Mm -hmm. So this is all in, in steps of us expanding our homestead, making our homestead into an actual business. Making it an actual business, not a hobby that I, you know, this do for fun so yeah so the pigs the increase of meat birds this is all part of it all right we gotta i don't know exactly what's gonna happen next but uh i'll try to take you along with, with us today 
All right, I got a bucket full of green waste. Obviously, they're, for, oh, oh, terrible. I gotta change the settings. Oops. All right, that's much better. That's much better. Ooh, there is a glare that I cannot, can't even see what's going on. All right. All right, so yeah, that's obviously much better. I don't know who to give the greens to. All right, I'll, I think I will give it to my chickens. The chickens should love this. Okay, what step are we at right now? We just put in the onions, the ginger, and the garlic. And we're making a paste out of it here on the stove. Oh! Let's draw. This is a rice porridge with sweet rice powder or sweet rice flour and water and then a little bit of sugar. So we're going to mix these things together and add the shrimp and the shrimp. green red pepper and Yummy. that is going to coat all the rest of the vegetables. And those are the other ingredients. Daikon, carrots, green onions and green onions. Buchu, Korean, green yeah. onions. Buchu, Korean, but green onions and just... Tastes different. American other green onions. American green onions. I see you put in a fancy. We're gonna have such healthy guts. Yep. All right, Hannah is taking a nap. I'm gonna go out. Oh, I gotta change settings again before I go back out, but I'm gonna do that outside. <laughs> what are you drinking? Tea. You're making tea? What kind of tea? I know what it's called. Uh, do you like it? Yeah. Okay. This is sweet. All right, if you like it. It's funny when you intentionally plant flowers. <laughs> Bro, they never, they don't take very well, but if you don't intentionally do it and you just randomly or not knowing you threw seeds out they will grow like wildfire like all those sunflowers I planted along the ed edge here maybe like six of them popped up I put at least 40 in the ground I just, that was intentional but if I throw some scratch grain around here with sunflowers all of them will bloom <coughs> All right, I found something on my property that I've been trying to grow here for ever since I moved down here, basically. It's all crimson clovers, just like this super bright red uh, clover. I seeded it, I seed it every year. Just spread it everywhere day and day. They grow into clovers, but they never actually bloom. But finally I got I got some to actually grow here. Do you, are they just pretty or do I? Look at how red they are. Isn't that awesome? I wish I would just have a field of this stuff for my bees to uh, soak up all the nectar. But yeah, so I'm gonna make sure I don't ever mow this spot and hopefully these things will grow and grow. And I get these purple ones all the time. These purple clovers, like that one right there. But it's the red ones that I've been wanting to get. I just saw something. Oh, look. That's a sunflower. Boop, 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 boop. All right, I'm going to go inside and we're going to try that pineapple sauerkraut. My wife's making a funny face. Is it terrible? And I don't even want to try because I'm afraid it's just going to be a total failure. I'd rather ignore it. We have to try it because we're supposed to be selling it. We're selling it? At the farmer's market. Holy sh smokes. All right. I'm well, let, about it. Let's go and try it. All right. I put the camera down so we can get our... Ooh. Is it on? Yeah. It smells good. It smells, it smells good. Oh, okay, so that we don't, smells like sauerkraut. Okay, we don't want to get any bacteria in there. So if people don't know, if you get like that white filmy stuff on top. It's called that's, cam yeast. It's all right. Okay. 
don't know why I'm so nervous. And take the weights off. I have fermentation weights. These little guys here. One of the reasons I made this kraut in particular is I heard it made really good gut shots. So at the farmer's market, I thought it'd be fun to sell fermentation shots. It's basically the brine, but it's really good for your gut health. And to sell like a two ounce shot. Okay, the leaf is coming off. Is there another one? Another weight. There's another one right there. Leaf or weight? Leaf, yeah. You can see all the bubbles Ooh, coming yeah. out. Yeah, is the camera the camera's not down that far, but no. I don't know. Do you see the movement in there? Yeah, I doubt they can oh, see that. Oh, it's bubbling. Ooh, that's in that you can hear it. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> hopefully right. you guys hopefully you guys got that. Okay, I Isaac, stop touching the camera, you're shaking it. There's another big one. I love the color of it. You wanna get a fork? All right. Isaac, you want to come try it too? Sure. Can you get a couple forks first? No. Right, give me a fork. Right, can we get all our faces in there so it can like... Okay, I got a little bit of crot and a little bit, get a little bit of the cabbage, a little bit of the pineapple, and I'll take a bite at the same time. Don't take a bite yet. Let Dad get some. All right, here Ready? we go. Ready? One, two, three. Mm. Oh yeah, that's really good. You like it? Oh yeah. It's really interesting. I'm not like as strong of like yeah, it's awesome as you are, but it's definitely what it should be. I think. Yeah. Tart. You mm -hmm. totally get the sauerkraut taste. Very strong. But then the pineapple kicks in. It's Awesome. The more? pineapple is so tart. You want more? Is it, do you think I should ferment it longer? Yeah, we have a bigger no. container in the. I think that's perfect. I mean. It's... All right, I want to try the. That's the winner. I want to try just the juice to see how it would be if it was a shot. Whoa. You put a little hot sauce in there. A little Tabasco sauce, a little vodka. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of a. That's refreshing. Yeah. That's like. Cool. In the realm of kombucha. It is. Yeah. Huh. That's definitely a winner. Well, and Isaac likes it, so. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the kids eating it, so that's got to be good, right? So, like I said, it's. You get the sauerkraut taste, but then the pineapple kicks in, and that's... So if you're in southern Indiana and you want to get some, Corden Farmer's Market opens up this Friday. We have a booth from 4 to 7 p.m., and Johnny Pineapple Kraut will be there. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you heard it. There it is. All right, I'm going to stick in the fridge, that's, I guess. All right, that's a winner. That's definitely a winner. We can see most of your head. You can look up your nose. <laughs> okay, that's enough, silly. <laughs> what did I look? Oh, all right. What time is it? Seven ten. Oh, there it is. That is a lot of bok choy. It's about, I would say, twenty-five pounds of bok choy. Yeah, it looks a lot, lot, lot more, but yeah, that's all that is. And I we, think it's yeah, about pounds. and we used to do like forty pounds of kimchi, which is nuts. All right, what's the next step? We're gonna get salt and salt this. Start massaging it in, and then let it sit there every thirty minutes. We're gonna turn it over for about two hours, and we're gonna drain all the salt water, rinse it, put it back in the bowl, and then add the vegetables. And the stuff in a jar, right? And the the paste. But the next step is to salt. So let's salt. Now we're, now we're massaging the 
salt into the bok choy. I keep wanting to say napa cabbage, but. <laughs> so when you massage the salt in it through the process of osmosis starts to draw the water out. We're starting with, you can tell, a full thing here. And within an hour or so, it's gonna really wilt down. It will look like a lot less. Go ahead. It's also going to be a lot less because this is the time I like to eat it because nice salty lettuce. Oh, I don't know about you guys, but it tastes so good. So we're being a little cautious about how much salt we're putting in. This is our first batch in what, two years? Yes, and also first time using bok choy for kimchi instead of Napa cabbage. So yeah, we're uh, the recipe calls for... Uh, we would be using a cup and a half to two cups for the amount we have if it was an apple cabbage. So, so we're yeah, we're only using a cup just and then we're gonna do a taste test halfway through, see what it's like, and then if we need to add a little bit, we'll add a little bit. Yeah, we can always add, can't always take it out. Yep. And since I'm Korean and I'm I used to live in Korea, <laughs> I remember doing something like that. I remember digging up pots of kimchi in I, I would I would think it'd be my grand, grandpa's place back, back in those days. Yeah, I remember digging it up. And the smell, you always talk about the smell. Yeah, yeah. The, the aroma of kimchi is unforgettable. All right, eight o'clock. I did the first flip after the salting. Look at how much it uh, wilted from the salt. And my wife made the paste which is absolutely delicious. All right, so we're gonna have uh, two more flips after this. So at 8.30, in half hour, I gotta massage it and flip it around again. All right, I'll see you then. All right, I'm about to get started on my third, my third uh, like massage and turning. Look at how much has lost. It doesn't look like much anymore, does it? Oh boy. All right. All right, we're gonna mix the vegetables. That's the daikon, carrots, green onions. Don't mind Hannah, she's going to bed and obviously she doesn't want to go to bed. This is the paste that we made that makes kimchi kimchi. Exciting video when you have a screaming child in the background. <laughs> All right, so this is an ungi, right? That's, I think that's pronouncing it right. And this is a traditional clay pot that you would put kimchi in and, and then you tie it down and you wrap it real tight. And this is what you would bury it in, but of course we're not burying anything. Alright, now we just uh, kind of shovel it in there by hand. And get all the juices in there. Okay, now we pack it down. All right, end of our video. We are done with uh, all my ferments. I'll show you what it looks like in the refrigerator. So these are all of our <coughs> pineapple sauerkraut. That's all the juice from it, which we're gonna drink and sell maybe. These things are, this is awesome. So we will be heading to our first farmer's market this Friday. Wish us luck. I mean, this is not our first time, but it's been, it's been two years since we've been to farmer's market. So wish us luck and we will get back to you on, and let you guys know how we did on, Saturday, on Sunday. 
All right. My name is Sang, just growing a little country homestead. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.